Shin Megami Tensai Devil Survivor is a turn-based Japanese RPG that passes the time. It does this better than anything else that it does. And I'm going to explain that, why that is. The game is, is very story-driven, and it has a very strong core element to it, and that is basically the battle system of... Tur it's turn-based, but it's also real-time strategy-esque, where you're moving things on a chessboard-ish thing. I'm pretty sure that's a different category altogether, but that's what it immediately reminds me of. And then from there, you can g go into a even smaller little attacks or whatever, and and fight. The w because of the way this game is set up, it's persistently slow-paced, so it never has enough variety for me to actually call it fun. I never really had that much fun playing this game. I did feel time whiz by, but I was just in the game, but I wasn't really having fun. I was just sort of doing the commands. Because the thing is, this game is very engaging in what it presents in front of you, but it doesn't feel like fun. It doesn't feel like you're accomplishing much. Or at least that's my impression that I got from it. The only real sense of accomplishment that I ever got was after hours of grinding, because later on, the bosses get really, really ridiculous. Now, I gotta mention something. This game is very, very story-driven. And for that, it's actually very good. It has a lot of really surprising moments that I didn't expect. Or, I guess that's a redundant statement. But, it also actually has very good characters. I'll admit, a lot of these guys, I'm really iffy on whether or not they're stereotypes or moe characters. But, I still like them nonetheless. And, another thing that I really liked about this is that I did feel that I was... Eng that I was making a difference in the story. I didn't initially feel this because I didn't notice what my little decisions had made, but by the end of the game I actually noticed, oh yeah, I did make a lot of decisions that affected what ended up becoming the ending of the story. There are four endings which you will know exactly when the ending will be decided by you. And if I'm and I'm going to tell you right now the order you should do it because because these end because some endings are much harder to get than others. So I say this right now, get Yuzu's ending. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that name right, but <laughs> Yuzu's is easily the easiest ending. It's the saddest, but it's the easiest and it'll get you some ways to get the the other endings much faster. Then I believe Osteros is the next easiest, followed by Haru's and then followed by Naoya's, if I'm pronouncing any of those names correctly, which I don't think I am. Th now, this is actually what I really liked, that the story would actually take a lot of these turns, and they would actually fit. A lot of times, you'll get sort of mixed endings, and it's usually a matter of, oh, this guy is either a fucking saint, or he's the epitome of all evil. But, uh, the character actually has to make a lot of hard decisions that are like that. Uh... And it's actually kind of well justified. It's really well presented, and I definitely like the story in this game. As to whether you should really check this out, I can't really give it my recommendation, because the thing is, it may not be boring, but it's just not fun. And that's what I gotta say. But if you're a fan of Japanese RPGs, your view may be different, and you may actually have some fun with this. And even so, it's most definitely not boring, and the story is great, so it might be worth your time, but remember that you're going to lose a lot of time if you choose to play this game, because matches, because of the way they're designed, they're super, super long. So the result is you actually can get really sucked into this in, with really long, drawn-out battles that are actually very engaging because of a lot of little things you have to keep remembering. Again, it's not really that much fun fun because they're all along the same lines and there's no real variety amongst it but you have to keep thinking about what you have to do and that is very engaging and it actually does suck you into it so that's basically my opinion on this game I'm not, this is not a full review or anything because I'm I'm just giving my quick opinion on this this is sort of what I'd like to call a summer vacation game because this is one of those games that if you have nothing but time to waste, 
These w this game will make the hours just fly by. You won't necessarily enjoy it, but you will actually want to stay engaged. And even if you're not into very slow-paced games, I still would check an LP or a walkthrough of this online or something, because the story is actually very interesting. Uh, it may be extremely offensive to very hardcore Christians, but I never personally took insult to it, and I don't think you should either. So, I ch at least check out this game and see whether it fits with your type of gaming style.